Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us here this afternoon on day two of our annual meeting 2014. My name is Oliver Kahn. I'm a, a member of the media team here at the forum. This um, conference is uh, actually very important. We talk a lot about inclusiveness, youth unemployment, lots of serious issues are being discussed here. Very, very few as important and, and very, crit very few that are as critical as the matter of corruption in helping address the long term challenges that the world faces. So I'm delighted in that respect, to be here with my colleagues on the panel to talk about the launch of the Apache Vanguard and also to, talk, to, to hear more about various measures taken by the aviation and travel industry to address corruption and uh, in, have fairness in industry. I will keep my talk to a minimum, so I'd like to just introduce my panel. To my immediate left, I have David Seaton, CEO of Floor Corporation and Chair of the Apache Vanguard, who will talk about the Apache Gang, Van, Vanguard and the, uh, the structure that is being put in place. Federico Corrado, President and CEO of Ombre, introducing the Safeguarding Aviation and Travel Value Chains Against Corruption report, which is also launched here in Davos this week. And then Fritz Van Passion, President and CEO of Starwood Hotels and Resorts Worldwide. He's going to introduce the Aviation Travel Collective Action Agenda. Mr. Seaton. Thank you, Oliver. You know, 10 years ago, my predecessor and several other CEOs uh, met here in Davos and created the Partnering Against Corruption Initiative. You know, since that time, uh, I think we've made much progress. Um, Pachi signatories and, and uh, many other global corporations have done an excellent job of putting a, a fa uh, best practices in place in, uh, for compliance programs uh, that have affected the slowing of the supply side of, of corruption. Uh, while there has been progress, there's much more to be done, uh, both in terms of the supply side but also the demand side of corruption. Today, I'm pleased to announce the creation of the Pachi Vanguard Group. Uh, this group is a natural evolution of Pachi uh, to a new phase of proactive leadership uh, in the fight against corruption. As opposed to working largely on the supply side of this issue, we're now moving to be actively focused on the demand side, utilizing a range of collective action strategies. Uh, a major focus for this year will be the collaboration with the OECD, and, and which brings a, a strong business voice calling for more effective implementation and enforcement of the OECD Convention on Bribery and Corruption. Uh, earlier this week, we met with OECD Secretary General Gurria uh, to formalize this action, uh, and the Apache Vanguard CEOs uh, will meet this year with government officials uh, signatory to the OECD um, uh, enforcement uh, uh, groups that um, uh, to hopefully to make that more of a, of, a, of a high priority issue for those governments. Our goal here is to level the playing field uh, and enable fair competition, uh, which can only happen through consistent application of a global legal, legal framework. It is our view that we don't need any more new national laws, but rather a full-fledged commitment to effectively enforce the laws that are already on the books. Uh, we were very pleased and enthusiastic uh, to be working with Secretary uh, General Gurria and the OECD uh, on this critically important undertaking. Um, the Vanguard Group will also facilitate the collective action initiatives, both globally and regionally, uh, through uh, new industry-level collaborations. And I think the, the best example of that is the, uh, the, the forum's aviation and travel sector, which has done a really good job of kind of connecting the dots between these work, work streams, both in terms of industries and regions, but also uh, the subject matter that we have relative to, to corruption. Thank you. Mr. Corrado. Well, yes, uh, we, uh, in the aviation travel community, we, uh, we had three uh, concentration uh, points uh, in 2012, which are related to connectivity, to uh, trade, and also to travel facilitation. But last year, as a group, we, dis we, we debated and we decided to create this project, which, uh, you know, which outcome was just released. Uh, and that project was called Safeguarding Aviation and Travel Value Chains Against Corruption. And why have we done this? Uh, large companies, global reach, uh, global supply chains, uh, so uh, a, a, an industry which is exposed to risks. So uh, there was a clear, unanimous uh, push towards you know, the project. And uh, with that, we partnered from day one with Pachi, the organization of Pachi, and we had also the very competent support from Deloitte, 
uh, in this uh, in this endeavor. Um, again, as as David just said, assuring a level playing field in the industry, assuring uh, uh, that uh, you know no unfair treatment will be done. It's good for the industry. It's going to improve in competitiveness and investment overall. The industry has been fighting for uh, for against protectionism and should also fight against any sort of misconduct and uh, and, and corruption. Uh, this report, uh, you know, to get to this report, besides of course the support from from Deloitte, we had from our own companies uh, 50, not not less than 50 chief compliance officers sharing knowledge, sharing best practices and uh, also legal counsel and experts for over, uh, from over uh, 30 organizations. So it was a pretty comprehensive and deep dive into, into the issue. So the report fundamentally assesses uh, key corruption risks within and across sectors and also proposes concrete recommendations. Uh, uh, Fritz is going to speak a little bit more about, uh, about that. So uh, uh, we are certainly committed and excited about uh, this prospect. Uh, it, it is a CEO-led uh, initiative. We do expect that other industries, uh, you know, will you know be motivated by what we have done in aviation and travel, and ultimately we, uh, we you know, we contribute for uh, for uh, for improvement of the state of the world in this aspect of moving corruption out of the system. So uh, the agenda fundamentally is, uh, is fundamentally to, uh, to seek a sector alignment on compliance, to build cross-industry and public-private coalitions to, ad to address uh, global risks, to collaborate with governments to design corruption uh, out of the value chains, and finally the fourth point is to position the industry as part of the global effort against corruption. So that's what it's all about. So I think it's a very good timing uh, with the creation of uh, Vanguard that we come up with this report, so it's, uh, it's uh, I think, adds up to, to the whole global effort. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Van Passion. Yes, so uh, I'd like to speak a bit more about the uh, Aviation and Travel Collective Action Agenda, and maybe first start just by setting the context uh, around what may be a very straightforward point, but one uh, important to make, and that is that uh, corruption today is one of the major obstacles to, to social and economic development in, in so, pl so many places around the world. And, uh, and the opportunity, therefore, for us not only to benefit the markets where we operate, but for our companies to operate more effectively and profitably, uh, this was a very important effort for us, and we were very enthusiastic about uh, joining the group. And uh, the endeavor here was also uh, not just to get a more level playing field, but to have a greater playing field by being able to participate uh, and, and act in, in more markets. And so uh, some of the things that we were able to realize is that there are benefits certainly for us working together and that our competitors directly uh, might be doing and acting in the same way that we will. But we realize more and more that there's considerable benefit across businesses and across sectors in, in understanding uh, how to work better in markets. Uh, as it relates to our own business, uh, today about 80% of our growth is in markets that have had uh, significant issues of corruption, at least in the past and, and even still today. Uh, and some of the actions that we've looked at uh, within this project would be how we can get better at partner selection and certifying the people that we work with, uh, how we can implement better financial controls, oversight, management of cash, auditing, risk management, uh, how we can improve training uh, and communication uh, with around, within our own organizations, but then how we can also speak with one voice with governments to be able to speak to some of the problems and issues that we have and, and point to some of the solutions which conceptually are not that difficult, but uh, consistent enforcement uh, is, is still the issue that, that we want to be able to, to have conversation about. So, thank you. Thank you very much. We'll now take questions. Pranjal, thank you. From India. Um, just a question, how difficult has it been to convince the CEOs to become the uh, vanguards? Because, you know, it's it's one thing to for them to take the responsibility for themselves and then, of course, to be the champions for a cause and then to convince other people to come in. It's a huge responsibility and there's, you know, multiple and very complex regulations and the description of corruption across various markets, again, varies. So uh, it, is a, is it, it is a huge task. Um, what will make this work? Well, I think the whole concept of collect collective action is, is the key. But, you know, to, to your first question, 
know, I think most CEOs want a level playing field. They don't want any kind of advantage. They just want to be able to, to win or lose the business based on their own merits. And, and when, when corruption is part of the system, uh, then that's not possible. Uh, the World Bank suggests that a trillion dollars is wasted every year to corruption. Now, if you think about the infrastructure needs of the world, uh, I believe that trillion dollars is better used somewhere else as opposed to lining someone's pocket. So when you think about those kinds of concepts, I think it's been very easy to get CEOs um, energized about this process. And it's not just um, what you see on the surface. So what we've all agreed to do is, is go back to our companies and, and, and put in place uh, programs and systems, training and education programs and systems to make sure that our companies individually understand what our expectations are and then, as I say, collectively looking at, at things in different different industries and how how we utilize the best practices around uh, around this subject uh, to make sure that that we've got something that's got teeth. Uh, I believe that that um, uh, the work that's been done here at the forum is 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 largely uh, a repository of information that's being used by the B20 uh, as they put together the working papers for the G20. In fact. Uh, corruption, anti-corruption has been one of the work streams um, from, since uh, Korea uh, and will be a key part of, of the Australian presidency of, of the G20. So I think there's a, a groundswell of effort that frankly is making it easier for CEOs to see uh, why, we're, why we're so passionate about this, this, uh, this subject and why they're so eager to be, be a part of it. Yeah, I would say as business leaders, we're uh, always challenged with allocating scarce resources, whether it's our own time uh, or the, the resources of our businesses more specifically. And when we have the opportunity to address corruption collectively and more effectively, as opposed to putting an equal amount of resources against trying to make sure and ensure in compliance on our own, I think the case can be made pretty compellingly for, for business leaders. and. What's valuable about the forum is it, op it gives us the opportunity to convene business leaders from different sectors and have that conversation. When we've had those conversations, the reaction has been uh, very supportive because I think we all recognize both the difficulties today as well as the opportunity uh, for getting this right. You know, part of the learning, excuse me one second, part of the learning um, is, and I think, you know, there's been some high profile um, uh, judgments against companies. I think every one of them will tell you that the business, businesses that were involved in the corrupt activities were bad businesses, and they didn't make money. So there's another compelling business reason for, for making sure that uh, we're focused on, on fighting corruption. Sorry, yeah, I would just, no, no problem. I would just add that uh, on top, of course, the moral issue, which I think is certainly a point for, for every responsible CEO, I would say there is a vested interest because, you know, uh, every CEO wants really to push risk out, out of the process of the company. So it's uh, 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 the more we can put this, you know, this sort of uh, problem away, the better it is for, for, for the company. And, uh, and for the CEO personally, to your question, there's a vested interest to make sure that uh, there is a risk-free environment also in that respect. Well, I, I think that, that our responsibility is to, is to create a framework that, that, um, has a that allows a consistent dialogue. Um, I think our partnering with OECD is, is, is the entity that has the ability to actually deal with uh, the policing and, and adjudication of, of these problems and enforcement. Thank you. Um, but I think you're right. I mean, I think that you're seeing more and more vocal CEOs um, but, you know, I think the naming and shaming is, is part of the equation, but I also think uh, focusing on the people that are doing it right is also part of it. Yeah. Uh, and leading by example is, I think, where, where the three of us are. Yeah, I would add to that, too. I, I think that it would be easier if self-reporting were more transparent and more straightforward. And so uh, it, 
the, the way systems are set up today, uh, business leaders aren't always uh, in a position to be as open for, for a variety of reasons. And I think from a legi legislative standpoint, one of the things that we are looking at is how we can get into a position where self-reporting is actually encouraged uh, and, and not, in fact, complicated the way it is today. Thank you. Lady at the front. Um, Angela from Senate.com China. I have a quite uh, interesting question. For example, one of your, um, like, I don't know, CEOs, you, you haven't been to any um, of the emerging markets, supposed you never been to, and you have the in initiative to invest in, for example, Nigeria or some uh, Southeast, uh, Southeast Asia countries. But the corruption is a common problem in these emerging markets and especially new emerging markets. You've never been there, but you, you launched this um, anti-corruption uh, uh, question. You, you, you address this question and you want to do it collectively. So do you think it would be a very good signal for you to get a project? in those emerging markets, and uh, how can you get a dialogue um, between the business and uh, the government to talk about, th talk about it while when it's not a public topic, maybe it's just something in the shadow? Well, my company's been active in China since 1979. Really? So uh, we, we, we know quite well that the challenges that are there, mm -hmm. and, and I think that this whole process is a, is a journey, and, and the education is part of that journey. Um, we've been very fortunate, the people we've worked with in China um, uh, have, have followed the same ethos that, that we have, even though there are issues around um, um, the DNA, if you will, of, of, some, of the, some of the people in some of the countries that, that see this as just part of business. I think it's our obligation to try to um, communicate and educate on another way. Um, there are certain countries that my company won't work in for the rare reasons that you talk about. Uh, but we're currently active in 89 countries around the world. And we're faced with these issues. And I think the key for us is how well have we educated our employees into what, our, what the expected behaviors are um, uh, to be a floor employee. And I know that, that, that my, my colleagues have done the same thing. So I, I would suggest we're on a journey. Um, I would love for um, some Chinese CEOs, some Nigerian CEOs, some Southeast Asian country CEOs to become part of Pachi so that they have access to the information and the educational opportunities that exist through the forum and through the Pachi Vanguard. Okay. Well, there is one. There is one CEO at the table who comes from a, an emerging country. I'm from Brazil. Amber has headquartered in Brazil, although we are, you know, in 40. We have customers in 45 countries. So uh, it's uh, it, it, so it, it's just uh, one example of you know trying to push the message. If in a given country, so if there is such an environment, and the whole industry, all the options, if you will, they they do not tolerate this sort of behavior. So uh, whoever is trying to have a misconduct will have nowhere to go. So I think you know, the strength of having an industry-wide uh, uh, position is that uh, you know, in the end, as, as they've just mentioned, you end, up, you end up companies not doing business in that country. So that, I think, has, has some power to, uh, to try to, 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 to revert uh, any, any wrong initiative from you know, whichever, whichever government official uh, you may find. Yeah, I would, I would invite uh, more CEOs from emerging markets to join Pachi. Uh, we first opened, uh, we opened the first global branded hotel in China in 1985 with the Sheraton Great Wall. Uh, and a number of the executives who opened that hotel are still with our company today. And I can tell you that uh, both in China and in other markets around the world where we've been a first mover, what's striking to me is that we have, of course, very different cultures as we go around the world. But the corporate culture within our company, when it comes to the values that we have, are consistent across personalities and geographies and generations, and, and we wouldn't have it in any other way. Please. <clears throat> And it's 
I can't speak on behalf of other companies. I can tell you that oftentimes uh, the actions that you take when you find out something has happened are, often, are more telling than when nothing has happened. Of course, it's all about change of a culture, so we don't have problems like that, of course, um, happening. Thanks very much indeed. This press conference is now closed. Every, we all have to move on to very packed agendas. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you to our audience watching this in the media center and elsewhere on our webcast platform. Thank you. Thank you.